OK, so in this example, it's asking us to uh, find the zeros and determine the multiplicity. All right? So there's a couple ways we learned how to factor and sol or to solve. One of the first ways we learned is factor, right? If you can factor something, factor it. Because the next couple options we have is quadratic formula, which uh, you could maybe look at it, um, but it has to be in a quadratic form. And then besides that, then you'd have to look into using the rational zero test, Descartes' rule of signs, graphing it, finding the zeros, and synthetic division, and all that kind of stuff. So if you can factor it, let's factor it. So the first thing I always do, if I want to solve this, I want to find the values of x, is I'll set it equal to 0 to see if I could be factored. And then I want to see, do they have a common term? Well, of course they do. They have an x squared that's in common. So 0 <laughs> equals x squared minus, uh, if I factor on x squared, that's x. x squared minus x minus 20. And I like that. Because now I know that this is another trinomial I can factor. Right? So to quickly factor this, I'll say 0 equals x squared times x, uh, let's see, minus 5. No. Yeah. Yes, was it right? Yeah, there you're right. Times x plus 4. All right? Now remember, when we're determ determining multiplicity, we don't look at what the 0 is. We look at what is the factor on the 0. You don't have to write it like this. But remember, x squared is the same thing as x minus 0 squared. OK? So when looking at the factors to determine multiplicity, we look at the exponent of each one of our factors. All right? If you want to think about it like this, you can. Because a lot of students will say, that has a multiplicity of 1. Why? Because there's a 1 outside of the factor. OK? That's inside the factor. But this x squared is outside the factor, because we can write x squared like that. Do you guys notice the difference? This is multiplicity of 1 or of 2. That's still a multiplicity of 1. That's inside the factor. That 2 is actually outside the factor. Okay. All right. So anyways, we know that here, this is going to have a multiplicity of 2. These both have multiplicities of 1, right? odd and even. So therefore, when solving this, now I can use the zero product property. And I set them all equal to 0. Subtract 4 on both sides. Add 5 on both sides. And then square root on both sides. So x equals 0, x equals 5, and x equals negative 4. This has a multiplicity that's equal to 2. Multiplicity equals 1. Multiplicity equals 1. Now remember, guys, if you are going to graph this, what does the multiplicity help tell us? What, what does the multiplicity tell us about the zeros? Does anybody remember? Yes? Right, so multiplicity 2 tells us what? Touches. Multiplicity 1 tells us what? Crosses. And then what is, this, what is our end behavior? What is our, what, is our, um, what is our degree, even or odd? Yeah, well? Right, it's a, well, it's, not, it's close to a priority. But yeah, it's, it, the end behavior is going to be either both positive or both negative. Since my leading coefficient is positive, Right? That means that they're both going to go up. The reason why this is so important, I didn't ask it for you guys, but let's say you guys had something like this and you had to maybe choose look at what the graph is. You don't need to plug this into your calculator. You know the zeros is 0, 1, and negative 5. We know the end behavior looks like this. And here, the graph crosses at these zeros. right? And it touches and rebounds at that 0. So the only way to graph this polynomial is it for it to look like that? All right, you didn't have to do that, but I just wanted to make sure you guys understood. That's why we use, that's why multiplicity and behavior is helpful, so we can 